First, I'm signing an executive order reopening our state parks and allowing for golf courses to reopen. This order will take effect at sunrise on this Saturday, May 2nd. And this will bring us in line, broadly speaking, with our neighboring states. As I have previously said, I did not want to see us in a situation where residents would be needlessly crossing state lines in either direction. County governments will regain the authority to decide whether county parks will be open or closed. Now, to be clear, we cannot have everyone rush out to a park or a golf course. Social distancing will be strongly enforced, and we expect golf course personnel to enforce this requirement. All parks, whether they be state, county, or municipal, will have parking capped at 50, 50% of capacity. And we would ask you, we, we can't make you do this, but we want you to stay close to home. So if you choose to go to a park uh, beginning Saturday at sunrise, go to one that's near you. Playgrounds and pavilions, including, by the way, visitor centers and restrooms must be closed. Picnics or other, other organized activities and team sports, sadly, will be prohibited. And our reopening comes with a strong recommendation that everyone wear a face covering when social distancing measures, uh, I was going to say something which I'm not even going to agree with, when they're difficult uh, to maintain, period. We want you to wear uh, face coverings. I have not mandated this as part of the executive order. It is a strong recommendation that you cover your face. But Judy and I and Pat reserve the right to mandate that. And we'll be looking very, very closely this weekend in how people adhere to these both social distancing guidelines as well as whether or not you're covering your face. But for passive recreation, including running and hiking, biking, fishing, boating, kayaking, and horseback riding, come Saturday morning, our state parks will be open once again. I recognize and appreciate, including many friends, every one of you who reached out uh, to me privately, whether it was a text, a phone call, to the many of you who spoke publicly over the past several weeks, including some of the protesters who urged this action. Uh, I don't know how to say this delicately, but with the exception of the mental health case that uh, many of you have come my way, your interventions to me did not matter one little bit. So with all due respect to all the pressure that's been out there, uh, we couldn't, frankly, care. We make this call based on data, science, fact, and again, the exception is also on mental health. Trust me, I did not order these closures on a whim. They were made only after detailed discussions, particularly with the likes of the folks to my right, with our public health, especially our public health and public safety personnel. Our goal has been simple and clear, and that is to slow the spread and decrease the rate of infection in the absence of either a vaccine or proven therapeutics, and there's been some good uh, vibrations around both of those over the past couple of days. I hope that all turns out to be true. The only tools we have are covering your face and social distancing. This means we've had to make hard choices, but these choices, I know, have saved lives. I am the one who bears the burden of making these decisions, and there is no amount of incoming that I won't take to save the life of one child, one mother, one father, one grandparent, one neighbor. I make this decision today based on the facts and the data on the ground as I laid out in the plan that I laid out on Monday. We have seen a consistent reduction in some key metrics, including hospitalizations. I am hopeful that we are getting on the road back. And with what appears to be a beautiful spring weekend before us, I am pleased to make this announcement today.